After Terror from the Deep, the XCOM series began its decline. XCOM Apocalypse was initially well received, but had been forgotten. It didn't stand the test of time. Another failed reboot saw the series fall even lower. None of these games could live up to the expectations set by the originals. Some were good games in their own right, but they weren't XCOM. XCOM Enforcer turned the series into a third person shooter, losing what truly made these games great. Modern games were taking over, and there was no place left for good old XCOM. It was this moment that I realised the inevitable death of XCOM was upon us. Until now. XCOM is back. Good luck, Commander. Holy moly. When I say this is XCOM... Oh. oh, damn! I mean it. Comparing this game to UFO Defense, there are certainly a lot of similarities. Particularly the feeling that you are fighting an unknown enemy. <laughs> Get it? <laughs> This game starts off with little story. All it does is play a badass cutscene and throw you straight into the action. This is what I love to see from an XCOM game. You're in charge. You control the lives of your soldiers and it's in your hands if they live or die. And when they die, it's permanent. Pray to the Lord this hits, otherwise your bow is dead. Please, 55%, come on. No! Oh, that is not good. That is very not good. Yeboa, rest in peace, mate. I'm sorry. Ah, oh, damn. The XCOM series is known for permadeath, and I've got to say, in this game, it's really well done. This is easily better than the original. In this game, you can only take between four and six soldiers on any mission, making each soldier feel much more valuable. So, if they die, your team is at such a massive disadvantage, and you really feel their loss. This was my favourite thing about the old XCOM games, and it's even better here. Watching soldiers develop in front of your eyes, only to see them get brutally murdered, is an amazingly terrible experience. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of scary to see how attached you can get to some of these guys. In the previous games, there was not much that you could do to stop your first few guys getting killed the moment they stepped out of the craft. However, in XCOM Enemy Unknown, your decisions feel like they carry a lot more weight, and believe me, you will make mistakes. <laughs> For example, you could either choose to heal up your teammate or go on overwatch. If your shot misses, the alien will probably kill your friend, but if you hit, you both survive. It's your call, but believe me, things will go wrong. Oh, this thing Strike is... one. We've got hostile contacts oh god. Moving on your position. You're kidding me. Please kill. Oh, good man, good man. That's good. This, these two supports are actually doing really well today. Do not. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. I told you we were going to lose someone. <laughs> oh, no. Throughout this game's story, you really meet some cool characters here, such as Zhang and Bradford. But the best part is when your own soldier... A complete rookie manages to pull off a clutch shot that saves your entire team. These things actually happen in the game and it feels oh so good. These moments are ones that you'll remember. 62. Okay, I'd love it if you killed this guy. I would sing your praises so much if you killed this guy. Please do it. Oh. 
stuff of legends, holy moly. Oh, please pray to the Lord. If you miss, you're dead. That's all I'm saying. Oh, yes! <laughs> just about. Okay, These now memorable moments are just brilliant. Some people can criticize this game for having a weak story. But then you'd be missing the point of these games. In this game, you make your own story, and you have an absolute blast doing so. The most memorable moments are when missions go foobar. I had a moment where one of my soldiers missed a 90% chance and hit his own friend with a rocket instead. Zang, you better not miss. 0%. Uh, seems good enough. Goodbye. Oh! Missed the target. 90% and that happens. Are you kidding me? On top of this, the gameplay is excellent. This game has two main sections. First we have the battlefield and then we have the geoscape. Both have been excellently streamlined from the originals. Firstly, let's start with the battlefield. Soldiers are given two turns. They can move twice or they can move and then shoot. This is much better than the old time units mechanic. It quickens the pace of the gameplay, keeping the missions going. Not only this, but aliens now come in pairs of two or three, meaning that you never really have to struggle to find the last alien. That was a big criticism of UFO defense, not to mention Terror from the Deep. <laughs> this makes the battlefield much more enjoyable, and it never really feels like a chore to go on missions. In UFO defense, an average mission could take up to 45 minutes. Here, it's about 15. Not only this, but there's also a greater variety of aliens this time around. This keeps things fresh, and they all have different abilities, meaning that you need to change up your strategies depending on which alien that you're fighting in order to win. For example, if I was fighting a sectoid, I'd probably be a lot more aggressive due to the fact that they have a lot less HP. I'd probably be taking lower percentage shots and moving in closer. Now, compare this to if I was fighting a muton. If I was doing this, I'd immediately back off and hunker down. On top of this, the level design is brilliant. Honestly, it's some of the best I've seen. You're allowed to approach a mission the way that you want to. Each map is incredibly detailed, which is much better than the old games. Secondly, Geoscape and base management has also been streamlined, taking out all the micromanaging that had to be done in the original. I really like this as it quickened the pace without dumbing the game down too much. However, one thing that I do need to mention is that I didn't realise how important the satellites were when I first played this game. Trust me on this one, you will need to prioritise satellites in order to prevent too many countries from going into panic mode and stopping their funding. In the base, you choose what you want to research and which gear you want to prioritise. For example, you can take a risk by building an officer training school so your team is more powerful and you can bring more people on missions, but if you fail those missions, you won't be able to afford a satellite uplink to prevent countries from going into panic mode. It's risky stuff this, and you can choose how you want to play the game. The two sections of this game are linked really well. Often, your performance in one dictates how well you do in the other. For example, if your soldiers keep getting killed, or you destroy valuable artifacts, you will have less items to research and you will be forced into spending more money on new soldiers instead of base improvements. All of this adds to how intense this game feels. It's really easy to lose track of time while playing this game. Immersion like this is always a good sign. This is helped by a really good soundtrack. Now, while it isn't heavy metal and it doesn't really get your blood pumping, they all fit the mood really well and build on the experience. As you get further into the game, the music gets more and more intense, which I thought was an amazing touch. Transitioning to late game, we experience a host of really cool alien types. Almost all of them are really scary, but I need to give a special mention to the chrysalid. No matter how good your equipment is, these guys will always find a way to ruin your day. <laughs> now, one of the most memorable missions is the shipping dock mission. This is where you'll have to find out what caused an entire village to be wiped out. This is my favourite mission in the entire game because it can get really intense, especially if you're playing on Iron Man mode. I don't want to talk too much about the aliens to avoid spoilers. Just know that some classics do return, but they have a few major upgrades. Now, there are a few story elements that I really like. The addition of cutscenes makes you feel that you seriously have no idea what you're up against. 
once again adding to the immersion. They are all really well directed and feel cinematic. These cutscenes are an absolute pleasure to view. Just have a look for yourself. This is central. Security status red. Repeat. What have you done? Answer me! Sir! We're picking up movement near the outer perimeter. Multiple sensors have been tripped. We have a breach! Not only this, but XCOM started adding horror elements into this game. Looks like one of the recon teams, sir. It looks like something. Is that your man, Delta Four? Negative, sir. That's someone else. Dr. Valen, what's he saying? He's saying, help me. These are certainly intense, but I do think they could have been used more frequently, particularly on story missions. They only probably happen at the start of the game. There are a few other moments that get scary, like the fishing village mission, but it's nothing compared to the first level. I wish that they kept this level of horror throughout the entire game. Okay guys, now those were the pros of the basic game, but Firexus went above and beyond and included an expansion pack called XCOM Enemy Within. This expansion pack has a few brilliant add-ons to aid the original. For example, the inclusion of Meld, this allows you to develop your soldiers and give them abilities that the aliens might have, such as resisting mind control or even turning invisible. Enemy Within also varies up the gameplay by adding in another faction called Exalt. These are a group of humans that fight for the aliens. In theory these missions may sound boring, but in reality they are anything but. Fighting other humans is a great change of pace, and invading the Exalt base is one of my favourite missions in the game. Another brilliant touch is the inclusion of the XCOM base defense. Oh yes. This is the most intense mission out there. It comes out of nowhere and the cutscene that plays is really well directed. <laughs> Shout out to Bradford for being such a badass. Honestly, once this expansion pack came out, there was no reason to play Enemy Unknown anymore. It's basically the same game, but just improved. It's absolutely brilliant. To be honest, I say that a lot about this game. I can't really rank any of these missions because there are so many good ones. I really can't stress how good the core gameplay is in this game, but it doesn't stop there. Once you've beat the game for the first time, which does take between 20 and 30 hours, second wave mode can be enabled, giving you an excuse to go around the second time. Now this is really interesting because it forces you to use different tactics. Enabling things such as varying soldier stats and marathon mode don't sound all that significant, but it keeps the game fresh, seriously adding to the replay value. I mean, if you feel like it, you can try beating the game on a higher difficulty as well, for the extra challenge. Now, speaking of challenge, this game is difficult. It certainly has a steep learning curve. I'd recommend starting out on normal, and then for your second time round, playing on classic, which gives you a serious challenge. I say playing on Classic is about the same level of difficulty as Superhuman from the originals. I mean, most people failed this game when they first played it, which tells you something. Even after all this, there's an impossible mode and an Iron Man option mean that you can't reload your save game. Absolutely brutal. Once again, this is part of XCOM staying faithful to the original and I have absolutely no complaints about the challenge. It's brilliant. <laughs> That's all I can say about this game. Brilliant. It's absolutely amazing. XCOM has built on a solid foundation from the original games and has modernised it. It's superb and I've never seen anything like it. However, whilst all this is true, there are a few downsides. For starters, in true XCOM fashion, the graphics aren't brilliant. I mean, they're okay, but there's nothing like Crisis or Uncharted. Also, Enemy Unknown was quite clunky. 
particularly in terms of the animations and the free throwing mode when using grenades. Fortunately, Enemy Within fixed most of the clunkiness, except for the fact that if a soldier gets injured, their armor customization resets. Oh my goodness, XCOM. Bradford's announcements can get annoying, but this is a minor issue, and most of the beginner dialogue can be switched off in the menu. Some say that the missions can get repetitive, but there are quite a few maps, so you won't really see many repeats throughout a single playthrough. Enemy Within did add 24 new maps as well, so I don't see this as much of an issue. I just wish they added more horror elements to this game. Think of how cool that could have been, particularly if they wanted to make a more scripted version of XCOM. Sort of like Chimera Squad. Now, I'd say the worst part of this XCOM game are the story missions. Mainly the base invasion missions. The pacing of these missions are so slow, completely the opposite of the rest of the game. After a massively boring slog, the boss you're up against is a serious pushover. I really do like the gameplay, but I'll be honest, if you aren't playing on Iron Man, it's easy to get stuck in a reloading cycle if one of your soldiers dies. This can get really frustrating at times, often taking multiple reloads to successfully save your soldier, bringing down your overall experience. Also, I need to mention the glitches. Yeah guys, I mean, they actually aren't that bad, unless you are playing on Iron Man. What? What? Oh, hell no. I had a glitch where one of my fatally wounded soldiers died out of nowhere. I mean, just look at this. You are kidding me, right? Oh, okay, there's still a chance. <laughs> Julia's still alive. Good to go. He's been clutched too many times. He's gonna do it one more, I can tell. I can tell he's gonna do this. I can tell. Don't jinx it, but, I mean, say goodnight then, men. No Through some absolute rubbish, random generated number we failed the mission. What? What? No, 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 no. Is that a glitch? So, whilst this game does have its faults, I'll be honest, they don't matter. This game is so good that you don't even notice them most of the time. The core gameplay is so groundbreakingly good that you don't even care that these faults are in the game. Playing both XCOM Enemy Unknown and XCOM Enemy Within has given me one hell of a gaming experience. In my opinion, XCOM Enemy Within is the definition of a legendary 10 out of 10 rating. This is a must own. I'd even go so far as to say that this is the best game I have ever played and it is genre defining. Go out and buy it now, trust me. Fire Axis has brought back the good old XCOM days. XCOM is here to stay. Other than that guys, I wanna thank you so much for watching and if you did enjoy, please do leave a like and subscribe and I shall see you all next time.